إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات عمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تمتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah The Quran The words and speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم And the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها And the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours وكل محدثة بدعة And everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وكل بدعة ضلالة And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray وكل ضلالة في النار And every going astray and every misguidance is in the hellfire ثم أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam Again as we are forced to uh, have our masjid closed and not be in it and although this makes our hearts really heavy with sadness and grief to not be able to be there especially on Jum'ah and for the other daily prayers to be the Yufar Rahman the guests of the most merciful one this is something that we're facing that is unprecedented this is a very serious virus and a very serious disease and it's a reminder to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to wake up, to smell the coffee as they say, to come back to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reaffirm our hearts back on the deen that we should have been on all this time. One of those things in this time is to make dua, constantly make dua, because it is, it, because it is the weapon of the believer. Constantly supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind one another because reminding benefits the believers. And so I wanted to bring again what was a previous uh, reminder in previous Jum'ahs. Uh, there was a, a khutbah on why our dua is not accepted, why the supplications are not accepted. And this was taken from a lesson from Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah, uh, the Hanbali scholar from... Uh, his book from Khashu'a fi salam the book on having khashu' or humility and focus in the prayer. And there was a narration mentioned in there, a story mentioned in there from Ibrahim ibn Adham. And he was a third century scholar, a companion of Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah. And he was asked about Allah's statement. وَقَارَ رَبُّكُمُ الدُّعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدَخُنُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِلِينَ He was asked about this ayah in the Qur'an, the words of Allah, which means, And your Lord said, Invoke me. Believe in my tawheed, believe in my oneness, that the, om, the only one, I'm the only one you should worship, and ask me for anything, and I will respond to your invocation. Verily, those who scorn my worship, who do not invoke me, who do not believe in my oneness, who do not call upon me with dua, they will surely enter hellfire in humiliation. So he said, okay, yes, this ayah is from the book of Allah. So they said, مَا بَالَنَا نَدْعُوا فَلَا يَسْتَجَابَ لَنَا So they asked, okay, this is the ayah from Allah's book, from the Quran. We're supplicating and we're not being answered. So he could have fed them with anything, but listen to his responses. And each one of these responses, we will يعني, add some, some reasoning behind why that response was given. And Allah knows best. The first point, he said, 
He said the first point. Okay, you're saying your dua, you're making it, but it's not being accepted. It's because you know Allah. You know He exists. You know He's the Lord of the heavens and the earth. الذي خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام ثم استوى على العرش. You know, as He said in the Quran, that He created this heavens and the earth all by Himself in six days. Even though He could have done it in a second, He created it in six days, and then He ascended above His throne in a manner which suits His Majesty. This is in the Quran. You know Allah, that He's the only one to be worshipped with no partners. And that shirk is the worst of sins and you should stay away from it. You know that He is, again, the Lord of the heavens and the earth. You know He has the most beautiful names and His attributes, yet you do not obey Him. We were created, my brothers and sisters in Islam, not to just live a luxurious life as this, as if this is our heaven, as this is our Jannah. Allah said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah said what means, and we did not create, we meaning the royal we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, did not create jinn or mankind, except that we should worship him. This is the purpose of our creation. So we know Allah, but we do not obey him. We know he's the Lord of the heavens and the earth. We do not listen to him. Remember on Yom al-Mazid, that day of increase, that day in Jannah where Allah yani, will call the inhabitants to a meeting in Jannah. This is when you're in Jannah, bi may Allah make us from the inhabitants of Jannah, I mean, and we're sitting in Jannah, and you think everything is perfect, and you've gotten everything you could ever imagine. And then a call will be made, Assalamu alaikum. You know, uh, peace be upon you. And the inhabitants of Jannah will respond, Allahumma anta salam. Oh Allah, you are peace. Wa minka salam. And from you is peace. Tabarakta ya dal jalali wal ikram. Blessed and glorified are you, O owner of majesty and sovereignty. And then Allah will say, Aina ibad al ladina ata'uni bil ghaybi wa lam yarawni. Allah will call to see the best gift of Jannah, where he will re- relieve, reveal, the, 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 re- remove the hijab, the hijab from his, the screen from himself and show his beautiful face to all of us. And this is the greatest gift in Jannah, to be able to see our Lord that we worshipped. So what will he say then? Where are my servants who obeyed me, who worshipped me, who followed my messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Where are they who did this although they did not see me? And this is the day of increase. What a beautiful call. That call being given to those who worshipped their creator although they did not see him. So we know Allah, but we do not obey him. So how can we expect that every one of our dua is accepted? Then the second point. وَعَرِفْتُمُ الْقُرْآنِ فَلَمْ تَعْمَلْ فَلَمْ تَعْمَلُوا بِهِ And you recite the Qur'an, you know the Qur'an, you know it's the book of Allah, you know it's the speech of Allah, it was not created. Allah spoke these words. And anyone who denies that Allah has speech is denying an attribute of Allah and could be entering into disbelief, if not a disbeliever. Allah said in the Qur'an, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا Allah said in the Qur'an with His own words, and Allah spoke directly to Musa alayhi salam. It is not likening Allah to His creation to say that He speaks. This is, this is an unfounded uh, nonsense, right? Allah speaks, He has speech, and that doesn't mean He's like His creation whatsoever, okay? So, He said, وَعَرِفْتُمُ Quran, فَلَمْ تَعْمَلُوا بِهِ You recite the Qur'an, yet you do not act according to it. You recite the actual words, the final message that Allah sent to humanity. After this, no more revelations. You either follow this or you're a disbeliever. You recite the Qur'an, yet you do not act according to it. This Qur'an is Kitab Allah. It is the book of Allah. Hablullah, it is the rope of Allah. Al Mamdud min as samawati il al ard. It is outstretched from the heavens into the to the earth. Tarafahu bi yadillah wa tarafahu bi aidikum. One end of the book is in Allah's hand, the other end of the book of the Quran is in your hand. Fatamasakubeh. So hold on to it. 
This is the book of Allah. We know it, but we do not act according to it. Allah says, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Look at this even in this time, where, of course, we take our precaution. We wash with the hand sanitizer. We wash with the soap. We, you know, wash for 20 seconds with warm water. We shower more than we ever used to. We're changing our clothes and putting them in the laundry. If we went out, we're wearing masks and gloves. Allah said, and we send down the Qur'an. That which is a healing and a mercy to those who believe in Tawheed and they act upon it. This Qur'an has the healing and the cure and the mercy to those who believe and they act upon it. So we must get to the point where we act upon the Book of Allah, my brothers and sisters in Islam, and I advise myself first. Again, this doesn't mean you don't seek precaution. That you don't, as we mentioned in previous uh, khutab, that you don't tie your camel and trust in Allah. The tying of the camel, you take your precautions to not get sick, etc. But Allah, in His Qur'an, there is a healing, a cure, a mercy for everything. And Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أُطِيعُوا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ أُطِيعُوا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ O you who believe, Allah says what means, O you who believe, obey Allah and obey His Messenger. Again, when we talk about following the Book of Allah, the Qur'an, and knowing it, we cannot ignore that doing that means also following the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. If we don't follow this, then why should Allah answer our prayers? So many people are getting into this ignorant and evil way of thinking that thinks that I accept the Qur'an, but the Sunnah is not protected, or the sunnah is not wahi, it's not revelation, or the sunnah is not uh, to be trusted. We seek refuge with Allah from that evil way of thinking. Obeying Allah and obeying His Messenger وسلم, go hand in hand. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he said, these two things can never be separated. You can't say, I obey Allah and disobey the Prophet وسلم, from the sunnah that you have that's apparent. And made been made been uh, been made apparent by the scholars who have studied to authenticate the hadiths, etc. All right, and you can't believe in the Messenger وسلم, and deny the Quran; they go hand in hand. The third point: why your du'a is not accepted, or why it may not be accepted. And you know the shaitan. Yet you have agreed with him instead of fighting him. We know shaitan exists. He runs through the veins. He's tempting us day in and day out. His sole purpose for the rest of his life after he disobeyed the call of Allah to bow down to Adam when he was instructed to. As he was a jinn but he was around the angels and the angels are fully obedient. And he istakbar. He became arrogant and proud. He said, Ana khayrun min. I am better than him. You created me from fire and him from dirt. I'm better than him. So he became proud and arrogant. And that one sin destroyed the rest of his life. Because he didn't bow down when he was commanded to while alongside the angels, even though, again, he was a jinn. So shaitan here, you see his, his evil. He promised He asked for respite till the end of time to be able to lead us astray. We know him, but we've agreed with him instead of fighting him. Even though Allah said in the Quran, "Inna shaytana lakum adu, fattakhiduhu adu." Surely, shaytan, Satan, is an enemy to you. So take him and treat him as an enemy. Who al adu al mubin? He is the avowed enemy. He's open. He's not hiding. You know, some people they smile at your face, and they're friendly with you, and you think everything is all good and dandy, but really. In their heart is hatred, or really in their heart, they're an enemy to you. Shaitan is an open enemy. He ain't hiding from you. He ain't trying to fool you. He said it. I am your enemy. And I will try and distract you and lead you down the wrong path till you join me in Jahannam. This is all he's caring for, right? So we know Shaitan, but we've taken him uh, as a companion rather than fighting him. Look, if someone came to your door, and we've said the same way, many of, the same thing many a times, and they knocked on your door, and you peep through the hole, or you look at your camera, and you see it's the person from the humans that you hate the most, you won't open the door for him. He's your enemy. 
You don't like him. You would never let him in your home. You might even go and get a weapon. You might even go and tell your family, go hide in this room or, or, or leave out the back door or don't come out because you're trying to protect your family and your home from this evil person. Then how can we ignore the plot of shaitan? How can we ignore it when he is trying to get us and get our families instead we open the door, we let shaitan come in, we let him eat with us, sleep with us, sit with us, and our families. May Allah protect us from this. If you take him as your guide, if you take shaitan as your guide, why should your supplication be answered? The fourth point, Ibrahim ibn Adham, he mentioned when he was asked again to recap why our dua is not being answered, he said, you proclaim that you love Allah's Messenger. He said, you proclaim that you love Allah's Messenger, وسلم, yet you abandon his sunnah. And here, I'm sorry, you know, we always go back to this because there's nothing more heartbreaking than this. I mentioned it previously the other day when I received a, a text message and it was saying to say this phrase a hundred times and this phrase a hundred times and this, and there was no proof in the sunnah whatsoever for that to be done. We have abandoned the sunnah. How can you claim to love the Messenger of Allah and you abandon what he came and taught us with? Nothing is better than what he did or what he came with. And if you think that, then you do not love him. And your heart has issues. You proclaim that you love him, yet you abandon his sunnah. We have to get out of the mindset that loving him is celebrating his birthday. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, لَا تَتْرُونِي كَمَا أَطْرَةَ النَّصَارَ إِبْنَ مَرْيَمْ فَإِنَّمَا أَنَا عَبْدُهُ فَقُولَ عَبْدَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُهُ The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Do not exaggerate in praising me as the Christians have the son of Mary, for I am indeed his servant, so call me Allah's servant and his messenger ﷺ. So, if we really love him, we do not venerate his birthday or uh, these other occasions. We follow his sunnah because that's what he wanted of us. Allah says in the Qur'an, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبُكُمْ اللَّهِ وَأَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبُكُمْ Allah says in the Qur'an what means, say, indeed, if you love Allah, then follow me and follow my sunnah, then Allah will love you and He will forgive you your sins. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا And Allah said what means, and whatever the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives you, Take it, and whatever he prohibits you from, stay away from it. Avoid it by all means. ثُمَّ قَالَ اللَّهُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ And Allah says what means, and the messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and pay attention here, because this should be the seal on, the, on, the, on every deal. He said, what... Uh, Whatever the Prophet what Allah says in the Quran, what means that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, is not speaking out of his own desire. He's not doing out of his own thoughts or desire. What he is doing and saying is only a wahi, a revelation revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the words of Allah saying this about what our Messenger وسلم, says and does. So guess what? When we were said, When we were left on a clear white path, the night is like its day. And I've been le I left with you two things. If you hold on to them, you'll never go astray. Kitab Allah wa sunnah Rasulullah, the book of Allah and the sunnah of his Messenger وسلم, We should know. That those scholars, may Allah have mercy on the ones who have passed and preserve the ones who are alive, who have dedicated their life to weeding out the da'if or the weak hadith or the mawdu'ah, the fabricated hadith, to bring to us the hasan, the uh, fair and the sahih, the acceptable, the true hadiths of our Prophet Wasallam. we should follow those. This is part of wahi, part of revelation and part of what Allah is protecting the Prophet ﷺ, he said, وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي And upon you is to act upon my sunnah. 
He said, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, pray as you have seen me praying. Not necessarily how you're taught. Not necessarily how Shaykh or Imam or Mawlana does it if they don't give you a proof for their action. Because in ibadah, in worship, you need a proof for what you're doing. It's different than the regulations for food, etc. In worship, you need to have a proof for what you're doing or you do not do it. It's an innovation. Take from me my your, your hajj rights. How you make hajj should be how I made hajj. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, we should definitely get away from this evil way of thinking of saying, I don't care how uh, he put his hands in his prayer or if he grew his beard or, or if he didn't pray sunnah before Jum'ah or whatever. No, this is the sunnah of our Prophet ﷺ. That is what we should go back to. And until we do, then we really don't love him وسلم. And until we really love him and Allah, of course, then why should our dua be accepted? The fifth point, فَعَرِفْتُمُ الْجَنَّةِ فَلَمْ تَطْلُبُوهَا You proclaim your love for paradise, yet you do not act to gain it. You're not working to earn it. You're not asking for it. Who gets something great without doing hard work? Just answer that. Who gets a degree in something without years of study and hundreds of tests? It just doesn't work that way. We proclaim that we love paradise, that we want to be in Jannah, that we want to enjoy of its fruits, etc. Yet what are we doing to gain it? We want Al-Fardaus, and when we ask for Jannah, we should ask for Al-Fardaus. This was an authentic hadith. When you ask for Jannah, ask for the highest of Jannah, Al-Fardaus Al-A'la, and, and this is what we should aim for. But what are we doing to get there? How are we going to be there? If we're not acting in the way where we obey Allah and obey His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْكَبِيرِ He says, verily, those who believe and do righteous deeds, again, iman, faith and belief, is not just a statement on the tongue. Just saying it with your tongue, La ilaha illallah, isn't going to get you to Jannah alone. And it's not just a belief in the heart. That you have that belief and you're devoid of good actions and righteous deeds. It's a compilation of tasdiq al-qalb, the belief in the heart. Wal-qawl bil-lisan, the statement of the tongue. Wa'amal al-jawarih, and the, uh, amal, the, the actions of the limbs. Verily, those who believe and do righteous deeds. So you have to give in charity. You have to do the good deeds. You have to help others. You have to be kind, etc., Whoever believes and does righteous deeds, for them will be gardens under which rivers flow, meaning Jannah, paradise. That is the greatest success. Inna lil muttaqina mafaza. For those who have taqwa, for those who fear Allah, for those who are conscious of Allah, for those who act in a way of obedience so that they put a barrier between themselves and the punishment of Allah, there will be success, meaning paradise. My brothers and sisters in Islam, we claim we want paradise and love it, but what do you do to act? What do you do of actions to gain it, to earn it? And we remind each other that there is an authentic hadith where the Prophet ﷺ, he said, مَنْ سَأَلَ اللَّهُ الْجَنَّةِ ثَلَاثَ مَرَّاتِ فِي الْيَوْمِ قَالَتِ الْجَنَّةِ اللَّهُمْ مَدْخِلْهُ الْجَنَّةِ That there is a hadith that says, similar to what we just read in Arabic, that whoever asks Allah for Jannah three times in a day, then Jannah will make the dua, O oh Allah, Grant him entrance into my into me into Jannah. So we should at least three times a day ask Allah for Jannah, and then the hadith continues. Whoever asked Allah to be saved from the hellfire, the hellfire three times in a day, the hellfire will say and make the dua: Allahumma ajirhum min al-nar. Oh Allah, protect him and save him from the hellfire. Which brings us to this next point. This is the sixth point. That Ibrahim ibn Adham, he mentioned why the dua is not accepted. وَعَرِفْتُمُ النَّارِ فَلَمْ تَهْرَبُوا مِنْهَا You proclaim, you, f- you know the fire, and you don't want it to burn you, and you fear it, yet you're not running away from it. You're not doing what prevents yourself from going into it, meaning you're not staying away from sins, you're not fleeing from it. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, فَاتَّقُوا nar. He said, fear the hellfire. Fear going into it. Just like you would fear putting your hand over a stove or over a fire that was lit in this dunya. Why? Because you would be so afraid of it, it's going to burn you, so you're going to pull your hand back. Even more so, fear the hellfire. Allati وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ hijara, Because its fuel is not wood and charcoal and uh, kerosene and gasoline. Its fuel is men and stones. Mankind and stones is the fuel of the hellfire. Allah says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَغَى وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Allah says, then for him who taga, for who for them for him who transgressed all bounds in disbelief, or they were oppressive to other people, or they did evil deeds of those who were disobedient to Allah, and they preferred the life of this dunya. They were living for this dunya to be their jannah by following their desires and their lusts. Verily, verily his abode will be the hellfire. And I remind myself and you, my brothers and sisters, that the Prophet ﷺ, he said that the Ummah, the Muslims, would be split into 73 different sects or divisions. Milla, Firaq, 72 in the hellfire, one going to Jannah. When he was asked which group that was, he said, Al Jama'ah, the, 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 Body is not just, the main body does not mean the greatest number of them. It refers to those who stick to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Because he clarified that in another hadith where he said, مَا أَنَا عَلَيْهِ وَأَصْحَابِي He said, what me and my companions are upon. So there is no doubt that the successful sect, even if it's five people, is considered the jama'ah. They are those who are upon the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ as lived and understood and implemented by his companions radiallahu anhum wa ardahum. So let this be a warning to us. Kulluhum finnar illa wahida. All of those sects will be in the fire except for one. Ma ana alayhi wa ashabi. What I am upon and what my companions are upon. May Allah make us from the saved sect. Ameen. Seventh point. Wa ariftum mawt falam tas falam tas. So, وَعَرِفْتُمُ الْمَوْتِ فَلَمْ تَسْتَعِدُّ لَهُ He says, and you indeed know that death is true, yet you have not prepared for it. We all act as if we can escape it. What have we prepared for correct belief, good deeds, so that the angel of mercy comes to take our soul, not the angel of punishment? The Prophet ﷺ, he said, أَكْثُرُ ذِكْرَ هَذَا مِنْ لِذَّاتِ الْمَوْتِ Frequently remember the destroyer of pleasures, it is death. This is what will destroy any pleasure you have. And look, my brothers and sisters in Islam, this virus, this coronavirus that is spreading, we should not curse it or insult it. It's from the soldiers of Allah. It's coming to take you, young or old. As we have seen, no one is safe from it. Look at how many lives it's just taking. The death toll is going up by hundreds every day. It is coming, whether we want to or not. It is from the soldiers of Allah and it will destroy any pleasure you had the previous day before you had contracted it. قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Say indeed that death from which you flee, it will find you. And it will snatch you and take you even if you don't think you're ready. And then you will return to the knower of the seen and the unseen and he will inform you with what you used to do. If you know death is true and you have not prepared for it, why should your da'a be accepted? وَتَرَكْتُمْ عَيُوبُكُمْ وَاشْتَغَلْتُمْ بِعْيُوبِ النَّاسِ You busy yourselves finding the faults of other people. This is the eighth point. Yet you do not look at your own faults. How has not how has this not become how we are? This is how we are nowadays. So busy with the faults of others, the downsides of others, the sins of others that we don't even look at our own faults. Allah said in the Quran, "Man amala salihan fali nafsih, wa man asaa fa'alaiha." Whoever does righteous good deeds, this means this ayah means whoever does righteous good deeds, it is for the benefit of his own self. 
And whoever does evil and sin, it is against his own self, and your Lord is not at all unjust to his slaves. Allah is not unjust. Allah is not going to punish someone who's not deserving of it. He's not going to be unfair or unjust. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah said, إِنَّمَا تُجْزَوْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ You are only going to be recompensed for what you used to do. How can we think that our dua should be accepted when we're constantly looking for the faults of others and we're not focusing on our own faults? Number nine, he said, وَأَكَلْتُمْ نِعْمَ اللَّهِ فَلَمْ تُعَدُّوا شُكْرَهَا And you eat that which Allah has provided for you, yet you do not thank Him. Allah, Ar-Razzaq, the provider of all things, it's not in your hands, from your hands, that you get what you have. The money you have, the home you have, the clothing you have, the food you have, everything you have is a blessing from Allah, Ar-Razzaq, the provider, Al-Kareem, Al-Akram, the generous one, the most generous even to, uh, to, uh, He's generous to all, but even especially generous to the believers. It's not your hands, even though you might have worked physical hours and sweated. It is by Allah's decree. It is the qadr of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, وَالَّذِي هُوَ يُطُعْمِنِ وَيَسْقِينَ Allah says, that Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said, and it is He, Allah, who feeds me and who gives me drink. So thank Allah, who has provided you when he didn't need to. Thank Allah who has provided you by night and by day. Thank Allah who has given you even though you were ungrateful to him. Alhamdulillah tamli'un mizan. This phrase of Alhamdulillah is a phrase that fills the scales of goodness. It's from the good deeds. So make your tongues wet in saying Alhamdulillah. And the last one we're going to mention. وَدَفَنْتُمُ الْأَمْوَاتِ فَلَمْ تَعْتَبِرُوا And you have buried your dead, yet you do not take a lesson from it. You face what Allah has promised. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةِ الْمَوْتِ What Allah said, what means, every soul will taste death. No one can flee from it. It's a remembrance. So learn from the death we're seeing around us, especially in this time. Day by day, young and old, healthy, sick, especially with this plague, this coronavirus spreading. Look at the death of what's happening around us. How they're being buried. Some of our brothers and sisters, they can't even be washed. Some of them can't be even shrouded because of the disease and the way the ordinance is for us to bury them. You can't even have the number of people praying over them that you normally would have. They're limiting it to just very close family. And even that, they're probably limiting to under 10 people or whatever it may be. Let us learn from this. Take heed so that we remind ourselves in and out of our prayers, remembering the barzakh, the life of the grave, remembering Yom Al-Qiyamah, the day of resurrection, remembering the sarat, the bridge over Jahannam, remembering the mizan, that the scale will be brought forth to weigh our good deeds and our bad deeds, and he whose scale is heavy will be successful, and he whose scale of good deeds is light, they will be ruined. Remember the questioning of the grave. Man Rabbuk, who was your Lord? Ma dinuk, what is your religion? Man nabiyuk, who was your prophet? And we pray and hope that we will respond, Rabbi Allah wa deen al-Islam wa Nabi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We pray and we hope that we will respond, My Lord is Allah. My religion is al-Islam. My prophet and messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So don't delay your good deeds or your charity. Take lesson from the death we see around us. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, we mentioned these. So there are big reasons why, again, Ibrahim ibn Adhami mentioned these. Again, to recap, you know Allah, but you don't obey Him. You recite the Quran, you don't act according to it. You know shaitan, but you have agreed with him. You proclaim your love for the Prophet ﷺ, but you abandon his sunnah. You proclaim your love for Jannah, but you don't act to gain it. You proclaim your fear for the fire, but you don't prevent yourself from it. You say death is true, but you haven't prepared for it. You busy yourselves finding the faults of others, but you don't look at your own faults. You eat what Allah provides from you of eat, food, and drink, but you do not thank Him. And you bury your dead, but you do not take a lesson from it.
Let us wrap it up here with the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam. And we'll just mention the end of it. This is a hadith from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu recorded in Sahih Muslim where he said at, toward, in the latter part of the hadith ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ ثم ذكر الرجل يطيل الصفر أشعث وأغبر يمد يديه إلى السماء يا رب يا رب ومطعمه حرام ومشربه حرام وملبسه حرام وغضي بالحرام فأن لا يستجاب له أو لذلك رواه مسلم This hadith, this latter part of it Then the Prophet Wasallam he mentioned a man who after a long journey is disheveled and dust colored the man stretches his hands out toward the sky and says, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, while his food is haram, unlawful, while his drink is unlawful, while his clothing is unlawful, while his nourishment is unlawful, how is he to be answered in such a state? This hadith gives four big reasons of why dua would normally be accepted. Why? The man's a traveler, and we know when you're traveling, you should make dua. Dua is accepted. Ash'atha wa aghbara, he's disheveled, dust-colored, he's in a state of humility and modesty, he's in a state of need from his Lord. Thumma yumuddu yadayhi ila sama he then raises his hands, and Allah is shy to not answer the call of the person who raises the hands to him in dua. This should be done uh, at times, not after every prayer, there's no proof in the sunnah for this, but only in times where it's specified, like the dua for rain, or in times where you need to really beg Allah, like on the plane of Arafah, etc., etc., or when you're in a really need of begging Allah for something going on in your life. But it shouldn't be done all the time, Wallahu alam. And then he said, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, he said, Oh my Lord, Oh my Lord. He's affirming Allah's Lordship. But the hadith ends by saying, How is he to be answered in such a state? Why? Because his food was haram. He would eat the unlawful. He would drink the unlawful. He would dress unlawfully. His nourishment was unlawful. So we should see that doing forbidden things, doing haram is a major reason why a person's dua will not be responded to. It's important to know this. Abandoning Allah, abandoning the Prophet wasallam, abandoning the Quran, abandoning the Sunnah, this decreases or nullifies your dua from being accepted. Allah says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ And when my servants ask you, O Muhammad وسلم, concerning me, answer them, I am indeed near. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ I respond to the invocations of the supplicant when he calls upon me. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يرشدون. So let them obey me and believe in me so that they may be led aright. This was the meaning of this ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Of course, the English is the meaning. So don't fool yourselves, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Don't question Allah, well, you know, I gave in charity, I make my prayers, uh, you know. Allah, and then and say, you know, uh, my dua hasn't been answered. Do not fool yourselves. Maybe Allah answered you and you didn't know it yet. Maybe it would be worse if He gave you what you're asking for. Sometimes you want a thing or you see a thing as bad for you, but it may be good for you. And the opposite is true. Sometimes you see a thing as good for you, but it may be bad for you. Allah knows and you do not know. Question yourselves, bring yourself to account. You will realize that you haven't answered the call of Allah. So then why should Allah answer you? Just because for thought provokiveness, I know this has gone uh, long and I've been trying to keep these short, subhanAllah. But there are a number of reasons why dua are not answered by Allah or you may perceive them to not be. And just to read these quickly, one, Allah is not obligated to answer any supplication in the first place. Second, you might have the wrong motive for supplicating for something like selfishness or the destruction of somebody else's bounty. You're asking for something bad. Third, empty iman, empty faith in that supplication or prayer is devoid of real conviction, real belief. All right? Lack of earnestness or ikhlas, empty supplications. 
you're you're just making the dua but it's empty it's not coming from your heart another thing a greater good that may emerge out of an unanswered supplication of the prayer it may be that you desire something again but it's really going to be harmful for you so allah doesn't give it to you because he's going to give you something better and disobedience to allah and to his commands including the commands of his messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam may be the reason for an unanswered prayer allah knows best my brothers and sisters in islam we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this beneficial for you and for me to fix our hearts and make us right to make us of those who know him and know the quran and know the sunnah and follow through with them and implement them and put them into action and make us inhabitants of jannah and save us from the torment of the fire and may he make us of those who call upon him and make dua to him and that he protects us and grants us of what is going to be best for our deen and our livelihood and the matter for all our uh, all of our affairs anything good i said is from allah anything evil i may have said is from myself and shaitan and i seek allah's forgiveness for it be firm in your faith my brothers and sisters in islam this virus is serious and it's a wake up call it's a serious trial a serious calamity and we should turn to allah and get closer to him ramadan is coming up don't wait for it because we may not live to see it subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik